right, so, uh, hello, and welcome to the Ghosty Films Podcast, Episode 2. Um, hopefully my, my energy level is not, as, is not, like, affected, because this is, like, the third time I've recorded this. The first time, the recording quality wasn't really that good, and the second time it didn't even record, and I was, like, I'm in a fort right now, because, uh, I, I wanted the some of the background noise to be drowned out and I put I like I'm in my bed and I have like pillows and a sleeping bag over my head to cut out some of the background noise and um and yeah I I, I'm gonna probably uh, open up my fort and look out again to make sure it's recording because it didn't last time and I went through the whole recording and it it didn't even didn't even record so um all right so yeah I'm in a fort again, and, uh, I have my, uh, you know, my pirate alarm set up, my no girls allowed sign outside of the fort, because you know what, let's face it, people, if you have girls in your fort, girls instantly compromise fort security, if you, if you're harboring vaginas in your fort, you you have problems are gonna ensue they're gonna be like oh i need to powder my nose and they open the door and the next thing you know zombies and murderous mutants are are in your fort killing you and then people like you know uh, nerds and gay people are gonna are gonna inherit the earth you're gonna have roving bands of nerds when the zombie apocalypse dies down and they're going to be doing battle with their plastic lightsabers and those those wolverine claws that you hold in your hand and they're going to be they're going to be fighting over frivolous things. They're, it's not going to be it's not going to be a good time to be alive. They're going to be fighting over whether or not Stargate SG1 is better than Babylon 5. It's going to be it's going to be chaos. And you don't you don't want that. Um yeah, I don't know. Maybe if you manage to survive and you're stronger than the average nerd, maybe you can be some kind of some kind of overlord and uh and conquer them. But uh but anyway, yeah. I'm in a fort for the second time. In fact, I'm just going to check to make sure I'm still recording. Looks good. And um so yeah, I've been trying to make my my recordings better and my channel better. And, uh, cause like a lot of my videos, they just, I'm, I'm not, I'm not even sure what it is people like. I, cause I, I guess I've been making so many different things and sometimes they get a lot of views and sometimes they don't. So I was looking, I was going through the internet, looking at, uh, some of the popular videos that people seem to enjoy. And I noticed that a lot of the popular ones, they're kind of, they're not videos that I want to make myself. A lot of them are, uh, you know, these fresh-faced youths who look like models who are who are just right off the cover of like Tiger Beat magazine, and I don't know Jailbait Quarterly or whatever the hell they're from. But they don't even they they don't even try to put some interesting content in their videos. Like a lot of the time, they're just sitting at some bar or something, and they're like, "Yo, what up? I'm here with you know MC so and so or whatever." And they're they're just like not even saying anything intelligent. They're just like, say, "Hey, say hello to my audience." And, and then the person says hello, and they're just like struggling to to use these cliche popular culture uh, expressions to so- try to seem relevant somehow. And it's just it's just some of the dullest content ever. But for some reason, I don't understand. People eat the crap up with a spoon, and like half of the videos. Are like okay now we're gonna do the cinnamon challenge where they put a cin a spoonful of cinnamon in their mouths and then they just start choking and they're like I I don't know what it is I don't know why that that's that that people keep watching that because like people have made thousands of those videos and for some reason people eat it up with a spoon and then I saw this other one where these other fresh faced youths were like oh, we're going to eat baby food, and they were spooning baby food into their mouths, and then they were making disgusting faces, and it was just like, why, why is that interesting? Why? And like, and, and there were these, uh, you know, there were these ad people that promote those kinds of videos, and it's like, why? Why are you promoting that? Why are you promoting people like that and reality stars who talk about, or people who talk about reality stars, like, you know, oh, what did what did Justin Bieber eat for breakfast this morning? 
uh, oh, hey, everybody, I just heard that Lindsay Lohan crapped her pants four times at her last court appearance. And, um, and people just, prom and like those agencies promote the crap out of that. And I imagine people, those ad people are like, oh, look, look at those facial expressions that they're making. Look at the disgusted facial expressions they're making as they eat baby food. You can't write that. That stuff is genius. Like I imagine that, that some douchebag is just in love with that for some reason and they and they just turn their noses up at other people's content and i and so anyway i hope hopefully i'll never i'll never sink to that level because like what's next eventually those people eventually people are going to get sick of that because everybody's doing it and they're going to have to make they're going to have to step up their game and just keep doing more and more disgusting things instead of the cinnamon challenge they're going to be i'm going to eat a spoonful of diarrhea i'm going to take the spoonful of diarrhea challenge and and it's going to it's going to be it's uh, youtube content is just going to be in the gutter and hopefully hopefully the, the decline of that kind of video is going to make some of my stuff a little bit more popular and and hopefully I'll never have to sink to that level where I'm spooning human excrement into my own face um so yeah I uh I, I get kind of frustrated and sick of that I'm just gonna check to see if I'm still recording still recording we're good all right so uh why don't we move on to the next section of of uh the podcast where we answer some use uh some subscriber emails um all right let's see where are we there we have our little musical uh musical intermission all right so the first letter reads dear ghosty films Lately, I've been having trouble getting along with people. I've been in two fist fights this week. Sometimes I just can't keep my mouth shut and I end up insulting people without even trying. What should I do? Um, wow. Uh, you know, two fist fights in a week. That's, uh, that's, a uh, that's, you know, that's, uh, that's, uh, troublesome. Like, I can imagine how that would, uh, that would be, you'd be feeling, uh, bad about that but uh fear not gentle youtube subscriber because sometimes i can be the same way like i i am kind of heavy-handed and i'm not socially savvy and sometimes i tend to, i i unwittingly insult people without even knowing it um but you know what you got to do instead of fist fighting these people you have to use your brain and you need to figure out how to manipulate the situation in order to get out of these kinds of scenarios. In fact, just the other day, I was at a friend's house and I was in a similar situation because I, all my friends were there and my friend's grandmother was there. And uh, again, like I said, sometimes I just insult people without even knowing what I'm doing. And so this grandmother was there and she was serving up like these prune snacks and I was like, prune snacks and I was like this I'm not eating this garbage I'm not I'm not having diarrhea all day because I'm eating because uh, I'm eating this disgusting prune crap so so like a uh, long story short I spit in this grandmother's face and a lot of people I didn't realize how many people were going to be angry with me because I did that and I was they were surrounding me and I was backed into a corner and all these people were just about to just fight me and bludgeon me until I was going to be hospitalized. So what I did, I thinking quickly, I used my brain and I changed the atmosphere so that I was not going to get beaten up. So what I did was I just had this big goofy smile on my face and I was like, who wants ice cream? And I said it just like that. And I swung my fist like a little, uh, you know, like a little like bu buddy, buddy, like friendly gesture. And I was like, and they, they were a little taken aback. Like they, they didn't understand. Like they I, I manipulated the situation. Like they were uh, one second, they were ready to, to just fight. And then the second they were like thinking about ice cream and, I, and they just couldn't, they couldn't process it. And before they could refocus their attention, back to beating me up 
I just started taking orders. I was like, what, what do you, what do you, what kind of ice cream do you want? And, and like, oh, Rocky Road. Yeah. What, what do you want on that? Do you want sprinkles? You want some whipped cream and a cherry? You want some, some, uh, some of that shell, that Hershey's shell ice cream, like, like syrup on top. And then like, they just, they were like the, 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 the atmosphere fear was refocused on ice cream. And so I went, I went around the room. I even took the, the grandmother's order. Like I took, I, I had a notepad and I was writing everything down. I made it seem like I was, I, I was, it looked like I was legit. And I took everybody's or, ice cream order. And then I, and then I was like, all right, just hang tight. I'm going to be right back. I'm getting each and every one of you that ice cream. And don't even worry. It's on me. I'm paying for it all. And so, uh, and so I, I went out, I closed the door and I went to my car and did I, did I get their ice cream? No, of course not. I don't have a lot of money to be buying on. I don't have a lot of money to be spending on, on buying everybody ice cream. And I, I just went home and, uh, I can only imagine that like five minutes later, they were like, well, it's taken him, it's taken him a long time to get this ice cream. And then, and they were like, you know what? I don't think, I don't think that he's, he's actually going to get ice cream. And I, and I was just at home and I was just, I was laughing and laughing. And I, I, I won, I won right then. They, you know what? They were about to beat me. They were about to bludgeon me senseless. And they, they didn't. I was like, I, I was not even, not even harmed. And, uh, you know what? The joke's on them because they, you know what? They should have been smarter and they should have beaten me up, but they didn't. And, uh, you know, but like I said, you got to take control of the situation with your brain. And I think if you try something like that, it's going to help you get, it's going to help you out of a jam. It's going to help you. And, uh, you should do that. All right. So, uh, all right. So, uh, let's see what's the next, um, the next letter that I'm going to be. All right. So, uh, the next one reads, uh, dear ghosty films. I own a restaurant and one of my top sellers is my famous bacon, potato and cheese soup. Because of this, I have an excessive number of burlap potato sacks lying around. All right, right there, like bacon, potato, cheese soup. That sounds delicious. I, I kind of want some of that right now. And not only that, but he's got an excessive number of burlap potato sacks lying around. And you know what? I'm right off the bat. I'm thinking if I had an excessive number of burlap potato sacks lying around, the possibilities, the possibilities would be endless. All right. So uh, let's see. He re- He continues. He goes, I'm a really thoughtful person. In fact, I'm the most considerate person I know. So, of course, I decided to donate my burlap sacks to the orphanage so the orphans should wear them for clothing. Wow, that's, uh, that's, that is really thoughtful of you, sir. That is really thoughtful. You know, I think you're going to fa- go far in life. Let's see, how did the, how did the orphanage react to this thoughtful gesture? I was utterly shocked when those ungrateful fatherless bastards turned their noses up at my generous gift. Wow, you know what? Those I am I'm shocked too. I'm shocked too, sir. I would think that those burlap sacks would protect a lot of orphans from the biting cold of the of the winter air. They claimed that the sacks just weren't insulated enough for the winter weather we'd been having. Being a problem solver, I offered to let the orphans work 10-hour shifts in my restaurant. You know what? You are a problem solver. That that solves a lot of problems right there. The heat from the kitchen would keep them warm, and after they finished peeling the potatoes, they could stuff the potato peels into their burlap sacks for insulation. I did not know. I did not know that that, that potato peels could be used that way. You know what, sir? I I tip my hat to you. Hats off to you, sir. All right, he continues. He goes, apparently... Orphans are some of the most privileged prima donnas of them all. They kicked me out of the orphanage when what they should have given me was a a hug and a big thank you. Yeah, they should have given you that hug. Actually, maybe not, he writes. I don't want to be touched by their little rat hands. What is this world coming to? Sincerely, Ned. You know what? Wow. I, uh... I don't don't know what to say. I don't... You know what? I thought... That that gesture was thoughtful and helpful, and a lot of the the world's forgotten children would have been helped by that. But you know what? They turned their noses right up at you. Um, but you know what? Come to think of it, 
that maybe that's um maybe that's uh, to be expected because a lot of people they uh, they don't like they don't like ex- they don't like ex- exploitation of children like what was that Kathy Lee, Kathy Lee Gifford or whatever her name was was uh she got in trouble for for using child labor and Nike is always getting in trouble for like work, having children working in sweatshops so maybe you should maybe you shouldn't exploit children maybe you should exploit somebody else that the world doesn't care much about like maybe you should move on to exploiting the homeless like nobody cares about the homeless people are constantly stepping over them in the street and uh, just not giving a crap about them. So I'm thinking like you should have homeless people work in your sweatshop, potato kitchen or whatever it is. Like you should, uh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta duck and move and, and, and bend when the world is trying to break you. So yeah, I'm thinking maybe homeless people are the, are the route that you should go to. All right. So, uh, hopefully that helped you out a lot. Hopefully you're, 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 uh, your work problem and your potato sack problem are being solved. And uh, hopefully my advice helped you out a lot. So, um, all right. So I think that that's a good place to end it. Um, This has been the Ghosty Films Podcast Episode 2. I hope you are listening. I'm starting to, uh, my vision is starting to be uh, a little spotty from like suffocating under this sleeping bag. So I think this is a good place to stop. So thank you for listening and, uh, Tune in next time. Thank you very much.